Bonjour. Uh, bienvenue. Uh, je m'appelle Jérémy Young. Um, merci à tout le monde d'être venu ce soir. Puis j'ai besoin de dire uh, ben, merci beaucoup au Sony Perl Per il Popolo, uh, la Sala Rosa et uh, Live in Concrete pour uh, uh, de m'avoir uh, avoir m'invité. Um, C'est encore weird <laughs> pour moi d'être uh, ici uh, avec vous tous. Mais je pense que c'est important uh, que les événements reviennent. Um, so, yes, it's exciting. Um, OK, ben, maintenant, uh, je vais passer à l'anglais. Um, OK, why are we here? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, Amaro is the name of a record that I put out this year. Um, Amaro is also the name of a drink. And like the drink, <laughs> the record, <laughs> um, attempts to sort of put forth a, a, a form of composition and improvisation that is bitter and sweet and kind of, you know, music that provides different flavors and, and stuff like that. But that's not all that Amaro is. Amaro is actually the name of the system that I'm sort of like working with, and the record is named after that. So this system is, it, it's like a bunch of garbage, um, li literal garbage. I mean, this, it's like, very old tape machines, very old oscillators, no, nothing works properly. You know, that radio is half broken. Um, and the whole, the whole thing with this system um, is that it's kind of about these different relationships, uh, the relationship between structure and improvisation or sort of uh, freedom. So a lot of the sort of pieces that I put together utilizing these tools, um, you know, they, they put a structure there and then I am sort of improvising within that structure. Um, but it's also, it's also kind of like about the relationship between um, human and machine, you know, my, my body <laughs> and, uh, and the, the sort of like haptics that is required to sort of, you know, make signal pass through this system in a way uh, that elevates the monotonal oscillators signal, which is sine waves, square waves, just pure tones and um, garbage tape, um, elevates it to, to music and tools that I can compose with. Um, and that's the sort of journey. And I'm, I haven't arrived anywhere yet. I've gotten here, which is really great. Um, but it's definitely a process, and it's a, it's a work in progress. And um, part of the reason why the album incorporates duos is that I need other musicians and other artists to kind of like, you know, mirror the process a little bit to sort of refract it um, because I'm constantly learning about it. So what tonight is, is I'll be doing a solo piece now um, and then I'm going to invite some friends to play with me. And this is kind of part of the journey of like navigating this system and trying to sort of get it to sing musically. So that's what this is, and I'm really happy that you're here. And thank you. And let's let's do some let's do some stuff. Uh, I'm gonna do a piece now that I am. Uh, the working title is "A Bent Path Narrows a Stream." Thank you.
Anybody else hot? Anybody else hot? Okay, I'd like to invite Madame Deanna Radford on stage. hear it for Jeremy Young. Woo. breadfruit tree that the child of the sun provided for his human mother. There is a popular myth that corporations are big people with lots of money. Sea kayaking is too risky, too strenuous. It is widely regarded as a myth but could it be true? Among the most common myths is, is, among the most common myths is, it is, it is contagious or caused by poor hygiene. Let them think the story, this story, 
a legend, an embroidered tale. Let them think the story, this story. A legend, an embroidered tale about the heroes of Greek fiction. Let them think this story. The belief that evening primrose oil helps to cure eczema. Average customers were men who gambled on weekends. Housewives were behind the rise in the popularity of poker. Here we encounter the second major difference between the science and the fiction and the fiction. The story of the crab is not a tale of heroic glory, but the celebration of loyalty, persistence, and determination, 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 Dionysus, and the invention of wine. In later today, in later today is presented invention at the daughter of the daughter and classic rife with stories concerning so-and-so's attempts to subvert authority and the other's retaliatory actions. In a neat twist, the government is the myth is now so widely believed that people are changing their behavior. An exaggerated or idealized conception of a person or thing. The book is a scholarly study of Churchill fiction. The meme, the cultural meme, the cultural item that is transmitted by repetition and replication in a matter analogous to the biological transmission of genes. But the ignorance of the facts is a great aid to belief in myths. The belief that only inflation entails unequal and arbitrary burdens, and arbitrary burdens, and arbitrary burdens for the citizens. Profitability, not here and now in this world, but in some future in time and place. Future, time, and place. It is widely regarded. It is, entails, the world, but widely regarded. Juggle both tasks. The idea that one the idea that inflation entails the future time, but myth, but actually, it actually, could it be true? A fiction, a fictitious or imaginary person or thing, a misrepresentation of the truth, attacking the party's irresponsible myths about privatization. It aims at creating awareness about the snakes among us and also to dispel the many myths of the reptiles. At the top of their list, the reptiles. At the top of their list was the idea that males are objects that females are primarily interested in personalities. For example, widely held secrets it is widely regarded as such, but could it actually be true? Feel the breeze, feel the heat. Which one will you choose? very hot up here. Ladies and gentlemen, Deanna Radford. And 
another lady of the tuba, Julie Richard. <laughs>
We're really cooking now. Thank you, Julie. Woo! Julie Richard. Um, yes. There's a lot of uh, a lot a lot a lot of low tuba, low sine wave. High tuba, high sine wave. <laughs> Um, okay, so this, this human that is joining me on stage, his name is Nick Kupfer. Nick Kupfer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, yes, that's, that's all. That's all that that is.
people were trying to harm him yesterday. And he wanted to let you know that he has some power. That bull in a china shop is Nick Kupfer. <clears throat> Woo! <laughs> all right, all right. We got one last um, duettist. Somebody who is going to come. Oh, no, that's not true. We have two more. Sorry. I lost count. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Maya Kuroki.
I messed with Maya on that one. I'm sorry. Maya Kuroki. Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, all of these tape loops are just like found from eBay. Um, they're old ballroom sort of string. Yeah, eBay. I mean, come on. Um, you know, ballroom music from the 40s, uh, like radio shows with sort of string orchestral music and stuff. When I cut these loops, they're super random. Like, I don't know what's on the tape when I cut the loops. I usually make like 80 loops at a time and I keep five. Um, and that loop was, was great. It was like a sort of, I think it was like a jazz combo, just like an upright bass and drums. Just kind of, you know, and then it just stops. And then somehow when the loop comes back around, it's on rhythm. So Maya and I just were jamming with that and we had a lot of fun with it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Ida Tony Nato.
Thank you so much. <laughs> I had a Tony Nato one more time. Woo. Um, do I have time for a little little extra thingy? I don't know. I can't see anything. Where's James? Where's my savior? Five minutes? Okay, yeah, yeah, you're busy doing the, the, all the computer things. Um, I guess I'll do a, a little bit, I'll do like a five minute piece. Um, I would like to invite Deanna Radford back on stage. <clears throat> I was gonna do something solo, but um, you know, we, we got to talking. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Deanna and I have a duo project called Cloud Circuit. Um, and it's, it's this, you know, it's, th it's, it's just this is what it is. So uh, we wanted to take an opportunity to play this piece, which I call Everything is Everything, and Deanna calls something else. I have no idea what the actual name is. What's the name? Uh, it is Pharos of Alexandria for an imaginary walk from the Great Library of Alexandria to Pharaoh's Lighthouse in Alexandria, Egypt, probably between 285 and 246 BC in order to transmit an information signal. <laughs> hands, friction, heat, amplitude, rubbing hands, friction, amplitude, and heat makes beacon from flame. Flare, flash, a sign. Marshal in message, a beam from hands, radiant address across the sky. We are sliding thumbs, index, indices, Soft tension of muscles, rubbing hands, friction, heat amplitude, beacon from flame, flare, flash, signal. Marshall, in message, a beam from hands. Radiant address across the sky. Sliding thumbs, index, indices, soft tension of muscles, back. Battery fever and sweat. Ick. Exuding front muscles and laptop, a surge. Connection sparks synapse and dopamine, light of palms, 
sliding thumbs light of palms, quickening, echo request, pings, contact, contact, ping, echo requests, my light, my palms, and thumbs. Rubbing hands with friction and heat, then amplitude, a beacon from flame, a flare, a radiant address, our breath. Battery fever makes me sweat. And contact pings with echo requests. Beacons lead thrills as lips brushing, as feeds. Sliding thumbs and index, soft tension of muscles and back, battery fever, front muscles, laptop surge, yet light of my palms, a signal, an echo request, a pain. That beacon's lead thrills as lips brushing, as feeds, as ancient as signals, as is, as is, as, as feeds, as everything is, as is. Rubbing hands, friction, heat, amplitude, a beacon from flame, a thousand beacons in a thousand flames, thrills as lips brushing, as feeds. As ancient as signals, as everything is everything. Light of palms. Connection, spark, sign ups, and heat, then amplitude, then. Echo requests as beacons lead. They thrill as lips brushing, as feeds, as dopamine, as thumbs sliding across the sky. Everything is everything. Everything is ancient as signals, as signals as my echo requests, as flames 
comes as flash, as flare, as signals, and battery fever. I'm sick. We rub hands with friction and amplitude. Everything is everything and is as is everything as is is as everything. As a flare and flash. Everything is everything and is the light of my palms thrill as lips brushing as fiends as 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 is synops as dopamine as heat as everything is beacon's lead everything is everything is everything in everything as everything is That's it for me. Merci beaucoup encore.
Jason Rohde question. Uh, I didn't do the video. The, the guy who did the video is standing right behind you. His name is Dan Palessier. Okay. And it's incredible. Hey, James. <laughs> Give me a countdown. <laughs> Thank you for that performance, Jeremy. Thank you for inviting me, James. No problem. <laughs> and uh, we already have one question from the audience, so I guess we can start there. Uh, Shall I ask again? Yeah, <laughs> go for yeah, it. So what, what is the video and uh, why, why this video? So the question is, what was the, what was the projections and, and why these projections? It's, uh, that's funny, because that's like the one thing that I didn't have control of, but, um, but I really like this video. It's, it, I mean... Dan Pelessier from Sony Pearl Pueblo did the video. Um, it's just like a digital uh, distortion treatment. Um, and it's projection mapped to these two uh, pieces of canvas. So the, if it wasn't obvious, the two pieces of canvas kind of represent me and then the guest. And it's, you know, we just wanted to kind of have some noise and, and uh, something like living that's sort of behind us, you know, as we perform. Yeah, was it done live or it was pre uh, prepared? It was prepared live. Prepared, it was prepared live. Prepared live. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone have questions about but, music? Yeah, let's maybe, <laughs> let's maybe uh, refocus. So you were you you said at the top of the show that the um, that uh, the name of this system is Amaro, and is, so that's something you developed yourself. Uh, yeah, I mean. Just sort of oscillators, tape machine, there's a radio, and then this thing, which actually you guys couldn't see, but um, I have my phone in here. Basically, this is a electromagnetic frequency um, amplifier. So, Eva, if you want to pump me through, uh, I can demonstrate. Okay. So, Every piece of electronics, including your phone and different things, gives off electromagnetic uh, frequencies. So what this thing does is just adds gain to it, and it, it kind of captures that specifically. Um, so it'll, it'll really kind of start buzzing around any electronics. And then that, that's, the kinda, that's the electromagnetic signature of, of the gear. But it's not too interesting by itself, so... <laughs> When you put your phone through it, um, different apps have different electromagnetic signatures. This is Google Maps. <laughs> um, and then uh, it can also amplify actual audio. So uh, here's uh, William, William Parker. Anyway, 
So anyway, uh, the Amaro system, it's basically, it's, it's just the gear, but it's, it's a way of, the, it's, it's a signal flow design thing. So mm. um, it's like they're, these sort of twin, well, they're not twins, but they're, they're <laughs> twin sine wave oscillators for me, and they, they operate independently, and I can kind of combine them in the signal path. Um, so that allows me to just like make chants and aleatoric loops and stuff and then kind of branch them off so that they can be independent so that I can kind of solo and go in and out and stuff. And that's mm. what I was talking about before with like structure and, and freedom. Like I always want to kind of have a structure that I'm working with uh, and then be able to kind of flow in and out of that structure. So something about the way that the signal flow is here, it allows me to kind of be inside and outside. Um, and it's... Simple when you really think about it, but it's kind of complex when you're talking about like a live performance when everything is done linearly. Mm. Like there's no pre-recorded loops or anything. Like I'm not tapping a beat in. So everything has to be done, you know, step one, step two, step three. And to kind of figure out when to branch off and when to kind of swoop back in is a complicated mess in my brain. So <laughs> at all times during that night, you might think I was sort of grooving, <laughs> um, but really I had like four lanes of traffic on the Autobahn in my brain going at once and I'm trying to sort of navigate what's happening in each signal path and yeah, it's not, it's, don't, don't envy me. So you can send the different oscillators through different pedal chains essentially? It, well, I mean it's a very simple pedal chain. Actually the pedals aren't, um, uh, it's just a, I have a delay I have a little bit of a reverb, a reverb thing and a reverse pedal, which it doesn't actually go in reverse. I frankly don't understand what it does. And then an octave to kind of shift down, uh, shift down an octave so I can get more of a sub um, frequency thing. So it's not, it's not the pedals, but it's just um, they go into different loop stations and then they go into different channels. Mm. Yeah. So the pedals are, are sort of before it splits, Before if that makes split. sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> See how it's like stupid complicated, but <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. And, like, and how long have you been working on this? Um, three years ago, I, I have a band uh, based in New York called Sontag Shogun, and we're a trio. And because it's a, tri it's a trio format, I'm only responsible for like a third of the sound. So as long as I show up with this stuff, it actually doesn't need to route to different places because I just need to kind of make that sound as a band member and bring it into the, the music. But then uh, the band kind of had a little bit of a hiatus and I, and I started to think about what I wanted to do as a solo performer and um, being responsible for all of that sound, I needed to s figure out a way <laughs> to have all of that control. Um, it's like, it's like working backwards from the goal, right? Like the goal <laughs> is to sort of be the one person performer who's responsible for rhythm, texture, harmony, melody, all that stuff, and improvisation over like ostinatos and stuff. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, farts. How am I gonna do this? So yeah, that, that's why. So that was three years We're ago. Actually and broadcasting on the internet so you can swear. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I developed it while I was making the record um, and so the record came out of like improvisations in this system as I was working through it. Um, and then as one does when you make a record, you kind of chop it up and you follow the motifs down a rabbit hole and make pieces out of it and stuff. But it basically started out with just improvising in my home studio with this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that was three years ago and I'm still working on it today. Like it still doesn't make any sense to me. So <laughs> yeah. And like, are you continuously adding stuff, or or now are you in like the subtractive refinement process? That's a good question. So, here tonight is like everything. <laughs> this is pretty much what my home studio looks like, except it's vertical. Vertical. So the oscillators are stacked, and I'm kind of like this, like playing tai chi with myself. Um, but when I go on tour, it's kind of like streamlined and stuff because it all needs to kind of go on the road with me. So I, I usually only take a couple oscillators and stuff, but the basic framework is still the same. Mm. But it's like this big boy doesn't come with me. Um, I don't know, other things, you know, I trim it down. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, it's the general idea that sticks no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like uh, you were talking about how the collaboration process mm. was really important to developing this album. So like, how did you pick your collaborators? Did you, did, were you looking for certain things or, or were you kind of, or you, were you 
actively sort of chasing collaborators who are going to bring something unexpected. So it's funny because making the album, the idea was that I wanted to choose people who I have a really strong collaborative relationship with, like Deanna, for example, um, who I work with very frequently, um, and Ida, who, although we haven't actually collaborated that much, we've worked together in a lot of different ways, and we know each other really well, and people who I admire and, but have never worked with, like, for example, somebody who I kind of consider my mentor, Vito Ricci, who's based in New York, um, and Johannes Bergmark, who's based in Stockholm, um, he's also, he's not, I wouldn't consider him a mentor, but he's sort of an elder artist who I look up to and I appreciate his entire career. Um, it was kind of both of those things. And then fast forward to tonight, the reason I chose the performers that I chose, some of them were on the album, like Ida and Deanna, um, but the others are not based in Montreal, so with the pandemic and stuff, mm. it, you know, and money. I mean, you know, there's no budget to fly people in from halfway across the world. Um, but I wanted to keep that the same. So I'd never worked with Julie Richard. I'd never worked with Maya. Um, I have a relationship with Nick. I've worked with him a few times. Um, but both Maya and Julie, I respect so much. I've always loved their music. I love their improvisational abilities and their ear. Like, it's just, it was, it's incredible. So I just wanted to kind of bring that ethos from the record, like that, you know, familiarity and, and um, freshness uh, to the stage as well. So, you know, and, and everybody tonight was local. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, so. but your record was not released by a local label. No. Uh, no, it was it's kind of Greek like partially con commissioned by the, the Greek label. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and how did you connect with them? Um, that's a really good question. I don't remember. <laughs> um, they're, okay, so this is Thirsty Leaves. They're based out of Thessaloniki, Greece. Um, they do a lot of improvised and sort of modern um, composed uh, electroacoustic music. So music that is part sound um, installation and just sort of sonic exploration, as well as improvised instrumental music. Um, and there was something about it, this kind of process that really fit with their ethos, and, I, and they're like staunchly DIY. They're very <laughs> like kind of, I mean, I don't want to say anarchist. That's like, that's a little <laughs> bit strong, but they're just like, Loaded. whatever everyone else does, we don't do it like that. And I, I kind of like that, so, you know. Um, it was a little bit of a match made in heaven, and I, I, I would have loved to release it locally, but um, maybe the next one, you know, yeah, maybe the yeah. next record. Oh. I mean, making connections internationally is fun, too. Yeah, and, I, you know, I want to go to Greece. Take me to Greece. <laughs> well, apparently you're playing, this show is playing <laughs> in Greece. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> this thing right now might be in Greece in a week's time. <laughs> <laughs> Here's hoping. Um, our, I, uh, because of the configuration of the lights, I literally cannot see uh, what's right. going on in the room. So. Uh, if anyone has a question in the audience, feel free to, to shout. Um, oh, hey. Hey, uh, I'm curious about your, um, your gear and if, uh, if you um, uh, seeked out individual pieces to achieve certain sonic ends or, have, or has the gear kind of found itself in your life and you go, okay, what can I do with this? But, so I'm just going to reiterate that for the viewers at home, listeners on the stream. Uh, the question was, uh, as, as far as accumulating gear, do you seek out specific pieces for certain sonic purposes, or do you kind of find things and then figure out how they fit? Um, that, I, I gather that question is semi-autobiographical, too. Like, are you a musician as well? Are you a musician as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay, <laughs> so I'd love to ask you the same question, but um, to answer your question, um, as you might tell, I, I don't, like, these are synths, essentially. They're, they're just sort of pure tone oscillators. Um, I don't care about the keyboard interface. I never want to play a keyboard interface. There's just something about monophonic tones that suit my performance because, like I, I talk about linearity, um, 
like building things in real time. And my whole thing is like a human-centered electronic music. So the machines don't do anything unless I make them do something. This isn't like a modular, which um, I guess it's the same sort of principle. But you know, a modular synth, you could start with one tone at, uh, from an oscillator and then turn that into an arpeggiation or something like a world of sound. This is just strictly like single single tone. Um, and so in that respect, like these machines are designed for my ears and my, and my sort of framework. Um, but they definitely find me because there's not a lot of, of older um, function generators and, and oscillators that are in good enough condition to kind of repair and, and upkeep and keep up. Mm. Um, I mean, they're, they're out there in the market, but there's like a lot of like rot and stuff and without kind of overhauling it, it's just a, it's like a whole big process. So it's, it's hard to find and when I do find something, I really either cherish it or I, or I get rid of it. Like anything that's in my studio I'm using, except for these fucking <laughs> West German tape players, of which I have maybe 13 or 14 of them because they're, they're built like tanks. You could throw them against a wall and they'll never break and I need to have as many as possible and I seek these things out. So anybody out there that's selling <laughs> West German tape machines, get in touch. Yeah. And so then for the, for, the mod for the modulation of the sound, is that stuff also sort of stuff you come by? Or, Guitar or, pedals. Yeah, but do you, are you like picking certain pedals when you purchase them or just like whatever's cheap that day at the store? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I said this before, but like I don't want to turn the tone into some sort of crazy sound or whatever. I, mm. I want the tones to kind of remain pretty, pretty pure, in, in, intact and, and pure. So the delay is really just to sort of give myself a little bit of like headroom or something, like not, not headroom, but a little bit of space if I, if I bring a tone out, then you know the the decay kind of continues and stuff. So that that's like a functional choice. Um, reverb again, it's just to sort of bring out a little bit more body from the tone, and then the octave is is just to play with the pitch. Um, I I don't I, I don't want there to be like distortion and tremolo <laughs> and so like that's just like not the sound that I want to get out of this electronic music that I'm trying to make. So, mm -hmm. um, but to to this gentleman's point. Um, the tapes that I use uh, in this project are all found from like eBay or whatever. They're just sort of old tapes that um, people recorded off the radio uh, or home recordings of, of people or whatever. Um, and I like to sort of keep that stuff. For other projects, I'll record my own tape loops and I'll compose on tape. Um, but for this stuff, I, I like to keep it like very chance um, generated. Anyway. So yep. I was supposed to bring my phone on stage to see if there were any questions from the audience online, but I forgot. It's getting late. Um, it's getting so uh, is there any last questions from the room? No? I, I have one. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, just quickly, if you can remind me, what's this type of music called? I remember reading in your bio. So the question is, what is this type of music called? Polka. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's electroacoustic music, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I mean, it's adjacent to music concrète. Yeah, that's what, it, that's what yeah. I was trying to remember. Music yeah. concrète. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. belongs well to that name. Um, but my, my real question is, <laughs> what kind of accident um, made you fall into this genre of music? Oh, that's a very long. So the question is, what kind of accident made you fall into that, that, this <laughs> kind of music? And that, so maybe this has to be the Cole Notes version, because I suspect the other version is your entire life story. It's my life story, unfortunately. Yeah, it's like it. I mean, I'm a guitarist, and so um, I started out playing in bands as a guitarist and writing music for the guitar and being in a band and getting into drunken fights and bars and stuff like that. <laughs> and then, um, you know, tape came into my life. And then once tape comes into your life, then you start to seek out the myriad of 20th century composers who worked on tape, the producers who do incredible stuff with tape. And then that kind of unfolds into these other uh, areas of electronic music that aren't necessarily done on the laptop. So, uh, you know, analog electronics. And um, from there, 
Uh, it gets really quickly. It goes into sort of like noise and um, uh, collage and, and different sort of like art music. And I only recently kind of had to pull myself out of that to, to rethink um, utilizing these tools in a more musical capacity. So I, you know what I mean? Like some of this stuff that I played tonight was very noisy. Like I, don't get me wrong, it's like, it's, it's experimental, it's like hardcore and stuff, but I, I want to elevate these machines to something beautiful and, um, you know, as if they're like a composer's tools, like a, a, a cello or a contrabass or, a, you know, a, a sousaphone. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm trying to sort of like rethink my relationship with these tools in, in a more musical capacity. So I'm, I'm sort of on the upswing from that like pendulum out to experimental electronic noise and now I'm kind of going back to a more musical thing. But anyway. Well, thank you to all the audience. Uh, thank you to our camera technicians, Mathieu, Vicky, and Chris. Uh, <laughs> thank you to Dan Pellissier, who is doing live visuals. And thank you also to our two sound technicians, uh, Eva in the room and Seb downstairs on the stream. Thank you, uh, this James. This has been. Uh, yeah, no, James. I did not think. Um, James got on. This has been the premiere episode of Swoney TV season three. There's a bunch more to come. Uh, it's a hybrid season, so there's a bunch of live shows and stream shows, and then shows that are live that are then subsequently streamed. So check out our website or our. Facebook is actually Facebook and Instagram are the best places to check us out. Unfortunately, at the moment, as we reconfigure our website a bit, um, uh, for more shows, the next one I believe is October twenty third, live in the room. It's Fiverr, and then uh, the next broadcast is actually uh, really? not next. Oh. Wednesday, but the Wednesday after, and that is a broadcast of the performance that Willie Mitchell gave us uh, last week. So check those out oh, online and in person. Thank you very much. <laughs>